Hello again! How has been your holiday celebration? Did you watch any Netflix films? Or the last concluded Metro Manila Film Festival? There were 10 beautiful entries. Well, I should say maybe six of them are quite good. And I watched the very first one, the winner, the big winner, the best picture or the best film, Fangirl. For my vlog number two, I'm going to do a review of Fangirl. Okay, so just to introduce myself, I'm Danny Kabulay. I will be your Pinoy film reviewer. So for this edition, I'm going to review the big winner in the Metro Manila Film Festival, Fangirl. Just to give you a bit of my background, I've been a teacher for quite some time. I've also been a corporate manager in the tourism industry. I've written books. I've also written articles for uh, magazines and newspapers. I've also won competitions, and the biggest of which was the Manila International Film Festival, where I was declared the grand winner of the Film Criticism Writing Competition. So let's go on with my film review of Fangirl. So I divided my review into three parts. First, we look at the acting department, the performances, the remarkable performances. Secondly, I look at the technical aspects of the film. Then finally, we will be looking at the message of the film. What is the film trying to convey to humanity, to all of us? Well, Fangirl was released in December 2020. It also was entered in a film festival abroad prior to joining the local film festival. And it was written and directed by Antoinette Hadaune, an award-winning film director. It stars Paolo Avellino and Charlie Dizon. Now, this film is basically about an obsessed teenager, 16 years of age, obsessed with her idol, Paolo Avellino, in a fictional character. And she spent one night with her idol, and this became a very unforgettable evening for the young girl and she did not expect the monstrosity of her idol so everything that she saw on screen she thought she knew her idol so well everything collapsed because her fantasy world crumbled and she saw the real persona of the idol Paolo Avellino so uh, this film was kind of um, drawing a lot of parallelisms to current society, current Filipino society. So it talks a lot about the fantasy world of fanatics and those who are into idolatry. So what is fanaticism all about? Believing in your idol. Whether your idol is already doing bad things or good things, you're all for him or for her. So in Philippine society, don't we idolize a lot of people here? We idolize showbiz personalities. We idolize sports icons. We also idolize politicians. Yes, politicians. Okay? So notice that in the film, subliminally, they actually, you would notice the picture of President Duterte flashed six times. Did you catch them? Yes. And this is like a subliminal message about fanaticism. Aren't there so many fans of President Duterte? The Duterte diehards, okay? Also called the DDS, okay? So the diehard supporters. So again, well, it doesn't matter who politi which politician you actually patronize, but this is all about fanaticism, okay? So notice also the actuations of the idol who is always mentioning Cursing words, bad words, okay? So, cuss words were all over the film. And it's kind of hilarious because his favorite bad word is the same bad words that are uttered by our president, yeah? So, you see that there's a lot of parallelism. There's a lot of messages here, okay? And then, at the end of the, uh, well, at the start of the film, I tell you, it was hilarious because the acting of Charlie Deason here was on point. Then it graduated to romantic, into more of sexual in nature. And then eventually it went to drama, to a very tragic ending. 
at the end of the film, the protagonist, the young girl, came to her senses. He was able to realize you know, what kind of idol this person is. And his, her idol is actually a myth. Everything crumbled. And she was also trying to draw some parallelisms between her own personal problems at home, her mom, the boyfriend of her mom, and her idol. Okay? So again, it's easy to forgive. No, We tend to be blinded by those that we love so dearly. The same manner her mom was so blinded by her lover, who is a wife batterer, a womanizer, and a liar. Same thing with the relationship between Paolo Abilino, the idol, and the fan, the fangirl, Charlie Diza. Okay? So, let me move on to how I scored the film. In terms of performances, well, the lead actors are on a high note. Paolo Avellino delivered a powerful performance, 8.85. Charlie Deason, 8.79. And then for supporting actor and supporting actress, they were not so noticeable because they were very, very short roles. But overall, in the acting department, 8.22. Okay? So, on the technical aspect, I love the direction of Antoinette Hadaune. Very intelligent, full of research. It was well executed. All the elements of the film were so superbly done. And she's the captain of the ship. No? She, she put everything together. She was able to make her stars or her movies, her actors act well. And all the technical crew were able to integrate all the elements of a beautiful film. Especially the screenplay. All the dialogues by the lead actors and the supporting cast were on point. They were bullseye. They were mirroring today's generation. The millennials who have a lo lost track of history or maybe who don't have a good sense of history. And then also outstanding was the production design. Why was there an old house that was inaccessible? Why was there a, you know, an unfamiliar place, an unfamiliar idol, an unfam everything was unfamiliar? Because that's where, what idols are. We see an image on screen, but the real, the real idol, if you really dissect and unmask, you will see a lot of surprises. In some cases, you will see a monster. Okay? So again, the way the production design was cleverly put together, the furniture, the candles, everything has meaning. Full of symbolism. Okay? So... You're talking about the young people. Do they have a future for this country? This film is a must-watch film. Overall, for the technical aspect, I gave it an 8.69. Now, finally, for the message, the all-powerful message, I believe the universality or the universal message of the film is fanatics will always defend their idols. They will be in perpetual denial of the flaws of their idols until... They vicariously experience it themselves. They will experience pain. They will ex experience rejection. They will experience scorn. So when they have experienced it themselves, the pain, they will realize their mistake. And finally, the moral lesson of the film is equally powerful. The battle between good and evil is a constant psychological struggle in all our heads. And that shapes the way we process our thoughts, our decisions, our actions. And that's why good must always prevail. We must always fight our demons. So come election time, it's always good to think who you want to vote for, what's good for the country, and who is the best for the country. Okay, well, I'm not politicizing this review, but all I'm saying is that there's always a struggle in everybody's head. And that struggle is always between good and evil. So, overall, the message of the film, I'm giving it a whopping 8.85.
By the way, the scale is on a scale of 1 to 10. 1 is a disaster. 10 is perfection. So overall, I'm giving the film a score of 8.61, which means Fangirl is a highly recommended film. So ladies and gentlemen, if you like this film, please don't forget to like this video, share it with your friends, or comment down below what do you think about this review. Did you like it? If you didn't like it, I want to hear from you also. Okay, so this has been your Pinoy Reviewer. I hope that you will follow up on my next few videos and watch again more videos. I'm going to dish out a lot of videos in the next few days. Thank you and have a new year. Happy 2021. Have a fruitful and meaningful 2021. Maraming salamat po. Thank you.